No, no, that was very good. How do genetics influence fat loss potential? Do you want me to kick this one off? <clears throat> yeah, go for it. You, you, you just, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, had a, had a good ramble there. You need to catch your breath. Uh, yeah, so genetics and fat loss. Uh, firstly, I would say that genetics influence weight gain more than they do uh, fat loss potential um, because, yeah, everybody has the, the same potential to lose weight. I think uh, we just have a much uh, more genetically predisposed uh, rate of gain or at least that's you know, what uh, the research is looking into now, why people are obese, um, you know, why we have you know, an epidemic on our hands. Um, and uh, yeah, mainly relates to overfeeding and underfeeding uh, and its influence on energy expenditure. So there's huge uh, individual differences uh, when people overeat on how active they are after overfeeding. So some people uh, will burn significantly less calories Hence, they'll be at a greater surplus, uh, whereas some people are more likely uh, to increase their activity levels after you know, overfeeding, um, which negates that energy surplus and limits the amount of weight that they gain. So I think that's on one end uh, or one area related to how genetics can uh, influence our fat loss potential. So some people just have uh, you know, a harder time uh, burning calories when they're overfeeding, uh, but also, you know, there's other issues related to like digestive uh, neuroendocrine hormones. So, you know, CCK, uh, leptin, ghrelin, um, all of these things are involved in regulating food intake, um, which obviously contribute to obesity and weight gain. So yeah, the influence of those hormones uh, on satiety and hunger, and that's in, its influence on subsequent uh, energy intake uh, is related to genetics and there's quite a lot of research looking into this um same goes for you know taste receptor sensitivity and you know our eating behaviors uh so there's actually quite a bit of research has found people who have uh the the bitter receptors or more uh, prone to you know choosing foods uh based on that uh will avoid vegetables uh eat more fat and sugars which we know are typically going to have uh higher food reward going to be more energy dense um, and they have disinhibited eating behaviors uh, especially among females so I think that uh, you know is a pretty big sign that people's taste buds you know that's you know a genetic thing that could make losing weight harder and fat loss you know a lot more difficult if they're you know, just prone to eating you know certain types of food that are energy dense um, and there's also you know huge uh, neural component to this. So like, you know, the cognitive uh, side of things. So dopamine, food reward, um, you know, there's a lot of research out there showing that obese people uh, will have, uh, you know, more pleasure seeking behaviors, uh, which are regulated by, um, you know, neurotransmitters uh, in the brain. So, you know, there's some uh, genetics there. So again, I think all of this uh, is, you know, interesting discussion. Um, and it helps us get a little bit of a better understanding as to why some people gain weight. Um, but in terms of losing weight, I think if we can start to address, you know, each of those points individually, um, to give people practical strategies to, you know, overcome them somewhat or not to defy their genetics, but to at least, uh, you know, make headways in, you know, moving more and eating less. Uh, can go a long way. Um, you know, I don't think that these kind of uh, genetic issues are irreversible. Um, you can't really change your genetics, but you can, um, you know, alter, you know, certain things that you do with your diet, uh, your lifestyle and things like that to make, you know, fat loss easier. Um, but I guess that's just a bit of a background as to why some people have a harder time losing weight than others. But at the end of the day, you know, this is just information for coaches. Information is only one part of the picture. Having an understanding of what's going on is important, but we need to work out uh, very tangible and actionable strategies uh, so that people can start to modify their behaviors uh, to, you know, change energy balance to you know, lose fat. 
Um, so does everyone have the same potential to lose fat? I would say yes, because everybody can create a calorie deficit and we know that that's going to you know, lead to fat loss. But I also think that there's differences in the potential to gain weight, um, which is more so uh, the problem that we're facing now. So that's my answer on that. Don? Yeah, so I think um, you, you smashed that out of the park for starters. Uh, there's, there's so many things to consider. And I think the, the weight regain issue probably needs a, a much larger focus than, than the initial sort of fat loss um, that tends to get the spotlight. So, I, like, I know this is a question from Tamara, and I, I think she's, she's touching on the right areas, but kind of asking the wrong question just fractionally. Um, although uh, she's very inquisitive and it, it's probably important that she learns these things anyway. So like potential almost in my eyes doesn't require addressing. Someone's potential can be so high, it can be so low. So that will influence the procedures that you go about to some degree, but the principles are almost the same, always the same. So the principles are the same. The, mm. the procedure is a little bit different the way you go about varying people and the, the potential is like, I don't even give, give thought to it. Yeah, some people have a, just a rougher time losing fat than others, but I don't, I don't really put too much thought into their genetics or how much potential they have. It's just like, if you struggle to lose fat, then we just go about it at a slower pace. We make sure we take a diet break. We we'll let you um, more often. We let you set point, settling point. Sorry, um, just creep down at a slower rate because you probably have that that you're more predisposed to that rebound. Whereas if people just have weight flying off them, then potentially their settling point was was lower than even where they were set uh, setting. Sorry, sitting. Um, and it yeah, like their potential just sort of in I just don't don't worry too much about someone's genetics or their potential in the long run my job as a coach is to worry about the procedures and mm -hmm. it's just kind of you either dial it up if they're going well you dial it down if they struggle 